good day my dear postgraduate students hope at least the majority of you have finished your theory exam and are looking forward to a successful practical counterpart of it at this juncture i thought i would touch upon pedagogy an important exercise in your examinations actually this is intended to boost the marks of the students it might not be having an actual weightage on the pass per se moreover it is the decision of the externals to decide the allotment of the marks for pedagogy the overall performance matters let us have that in mind before we plunge into it proper incidentally i am also a core member of the medical education unit of srm medical college and the other institutes where i had worked to start with this is miller a great educationalist who had designed a pyramid in fact it was only a two dimensional pyramid that we see over here the student is supposed to know something know how of it shows how it works and finally he does it independently so that is the basic concept of the medical education initially we are all in the first stage of fact gathering later on we interpret then we demonstrate in fact knowingly or unknowingly many of you are already in this stage by taking the tutorials demonstrating the practical skills and so on to our students and finally later on you will be having the performance this shall be at a later date also you find simultaneously there is going to be an attitude a commitment a skill that will be developing and knowledge that goes on growing throughout your career there are very many methods of teaching or teaching skills so as students who are facing the exam it is better that we at least have a list of it in hand for example there shall be large group lectures an entire class of 100 200 300 students one small group teaching wherein you find that there is a much comfortable student teacher ratio sometimes there can be a one to one teaching where one person demonstrates and the other person observes as in the case of a teaching microscope symposium this especially came into play during the recent covid it was a what to say some kind of a great disaster and during that period many experts from various fields they converged on to the screen and gave their expert view this could be called a symposium one can be a physician another one a microbiologist a third person can be an economist fourth one a pharmacist and so on and so forth conference your colleges my college all would have conducted a lot of these conferences wherein you find that there are groups of people who attended rather in large numbers because there is going to be a convergence of a few experts over a few days definitely the their words will be golden words so that is a conference leave alone the sarcasm part of it a conference is supposed to be a meeting of important people who independently can do nothing but together can decide that nothing can be done so this is something regarding the classification of the non hodgkins lymphoma wherein there were more classifications than the pathologists themselves 
not my saying, Robin says. Seminars. You people would have taken seminars. Or you find that an expert from another department can come and deliver on a specific topic. It can be, for example, transplantation. So there can be a seminar on it. Online teaching, all of us are very much used to. Even what I'm doing now is an online teaching. Thanks to coronavirus and the COVID disaster. The Zoom classes. In fact, it was my students who helped me arrange for the classes and deliver. So these are the various methods. You might be asked, what are the different modalities of teaching? So you people should enumerate. Do not compromise on that. Large group, small group, one-to-one, -one, symposium, conference, seminar, online, etc. This is what I was talking about. So there is a microscope and you find so far it is complete. But then there is another pair of eyepieces over here, wherein an expert will be focusing a cell. This is exactly how I learned the cells of the leukemia during my second year of MD. Believe, believe it or not. I had a concept, but then the myeloblast, the promyelocyte, etc. They were all pointed out by Professor Seth Raman of medicine. He was a self-trained hematologist who treated patients with leukemias. So it was a blessing for me. So this is a teaching microscope which can be extremely useful, even much better than the so-called decahead and pentahead etc. Here it is almost one-to-one -one teaching. The lecture on the contrary, you can see the immense amount of confidence that this gentleman is having. And he is trying to pull a huge audience. Those days, there were no audiovisual aids. And there used to be just the mics with which a teacher or a lecturer is to address hundreds of people. And there is also a political scenario wherein you will have to hold the entire audience. That can happen by means of modulation. The exact topic, talking to the topic, raising your voice and command in language, the flow of it, it all matters. So there are numerous things for a good lecturer. Few people shall be becoming so in the later part of your career. This, of course, we have been speaking about. There have been the decahead and the pentahead microscopes. The idea is one person controls and the other people see. And he will be having a pointer so that the others are able to observe. Sometimes they can have the doubts clarified by this. Also, this is no worse than any other good microscope, so much so that it can be attached to any other electronic gadget or a computer. And the photograph of it being taken digitally, it can be sent elsewhere and then an opinion can be obtained. So it is a continuation of it. So with innovative technology, you find that the older technologies are becoming more and more obsolete. Not that they are bad. Small group teaching. This is one. Just now I had been telling you people about a large lecture. It can be a huge hall wherein you'll have to hold the attention of the audience. But this is totally different. It is a small group teaching, wherein there might be just about, say, nine students, eight students, or 10 students, and you are the only tutor. The classical example will be the anatomy dissection table, or the table that you have been allotted as a tutor in pathology. So you see here that there is an eye-to-eye -eye contact and there is some kind of a speaking. They say that the eye-to-eye -eye contact is actually an additional mode of communication. The eyes speak, which is not possible in a huge lecture. So that is small group teaching. This is a much better one. So you find that 
it will be usually an oval table or so, wherein there is one instructor and there are groups of children. The advantage is there will be some children who will be very active, persistent, whereas others, they are not stupid. They will be quite passive observers. So the teacher will be initiating it. And after some time, you find that it becomes more of a conversation between the teacher and the students. If the teacher is really good, what he or she would do is gradually withdraw. So that there is no teacher there, but only the groups of students and they will be able to teach each other. So at a place where there were about 10 persons, you have created nine teachers who will be able to teach all the others. Look at the permutation combination and the effect. So this is the advantage of small group teaching. Naturally, you find that even after passing the house agency, the students go to the anatomy dissection table teacher. What are the media for teaching? So lecture, we have already spoken. There is another one, the black book, or nowadays a white book. OHP, I do not know how many of you have even seen. Slide projector, similarly. I shall be showing you some pictures of them. The LCD projector, bedside teaching, charts that we are using in pathology and other subjects as well. Specimen, the gross. Practical demonstration, maybe a blood grouping or a urine analysis, etc. Additionally, we may be needing something like a mic, the video coverage, pointer to point exactly to the screen as I am doing now. Somewhere, some Google questions can be created. You get also the answers for them. And finally, there can be a feedback form given to the students. These are certain must-have things in any of the teaching hospitals or colleges. So please have a definite list of it. You need not panic. It is a very easy and simple one. 90% of it you already know. Look at this one. This is called the slide project. So what happens is you can have a picture of a microscopy, a testicular seminoma can be photographed because of the camera that is attached to the trinocular microscope. One possibility. Or nowadays we have got a digital screening from which you can take a picture. So these are being collected. It can be gross specimen, which can again be converted into transparent slides like this. And what happens is they are all fitted into a folder like this. And every time you click, you find that one slide goes in and it moves forward or back. So there is a gradual change in the slide that happens. So this is a one I used to have this and I've got a collection of almost all the undergraduate slides, which I used earlier for teaching. But nowadays with the advent of the net, the internet so on, we find that we are very comfortably using things without knowing the bag. We have literally succumbed to the technology that we are neither as strong as them, nor do we have the strong basis as our forefathers. So we are in a weak platform. The internet has now taken over. Not only the teaching, take any other mode of living, banking, for example. They have all been taken over. Coming back to my favorite, the blackboard. The blackboard is the best. What happens is it garners the attention of the students. The answers are developed. I used to have one Professor Viswanathan of biochemistry. He used to be quite short, maybe a little taller than the board as such. But then he used to start from this corner, take the class, and by the end of the class, the entire board will be covered with material. Just a chalk. People used to call it the chalk on top also. Obviously, the major advantage in this is the students have got an immense confidence because the teacher is developing an answer. It is spontaneous from within. He has not downloaded and he is not reading. Therefore, they will definitely give the teacher a due respect. But a disadvantage can be, as he writes on the board, the students will be seeing the back. 
it is not always possible to turn around and then talk again. Obviously, some time will be lost. It is a cheap and a conventional one. One of the major drawbacks will be the chalk dust allergy. And even after a fantastic class or a diagram, we used to have one Professor Cooper for anatomy who can draw the pictures with both hands. Superb pictures, but those cannot be retained. That can be a disadvantage itself. And obviously, it can be time consuming. So this is what I had been talking about as the overhead, overhead projector, OHP. So this is the projector as such. You find that this will be the reflecting mirror. There will be a magnifying lens over here. And this can be an adjustable holder. So depending upon the distance from the screen, this can be raised up or down. We are supposed to have a perfect rectangular outline of it. And anything can be projected. Usually we will be having what is called something like an X-ray sheet, a transparency sheet in which the answers will be written. Later on, we started taking a Xerox on it that can be projected. And when Professor Narasimhan of JIPMA, he used to demonstrate various things. For example, even a urine analysis can be demonstrated by this method. Last week, I took a class on the bone marrow needle and the lumbar puncture needle using the overhead. So it is a little laborious. People are not very familiar with it. And the idea is sometimes we can hide the material. In a LCD slide, the entire thing will be outlaid. Whereas here I can cover half of it and then gradually expose it to the students. But it is laborious, space occupying, good for small group teachings. And you can demonstrate some procedures. FNAC I used to demonstrate using a overhead project. This is the LCD. What is LCD? Liquid crystal display. And this is the projector that is being used for it. And you've got a LCD TV and other things. So you find that it is more technical, digital. And the downloading, it can be connected to the net and it can be downloaded. And it can be stored. The material can be stored in the computer and it can be displayed using the LCD projector. The problem with this is editing can be difficult. That is why most of the times you find that the students is caught on the wrong foot by downloading something, some complicated work of somebody and is not able to explain. Compilation again is difficult. You would have seen my classes. It consumes a lot of time. Most of them are copy paste and therefore not very effective and it can be misused rather than used. So that is a LCD projector. Small group teaching. I told you that the classical example is the anatomy dissection hall or table. Here it is a virtual autopsy. I have taken a class on virtual autopsy. Go back and just have a look at it because you will be definitely having a chance to answer that during the while. A small group teaching. Obviously, the attention is there. There are certain things called as OSCE and OSPI. Nowadays, these have come into play. I am personally against this. Objective structure, clinical examination. Objective structure, practical examination. Practical examinations for the basic sciences, paramedical sciences, and the clinical examination for the clinical subjects. This was brought into play by the Western countries because they did not have that many patients. Whereas India is flooded with patients. We might have to pay them a little tip. You are getting patients. Whereas in the West, it is not possible for examining the patient also, you'll have to pay a huge sum and they are quite fussy. That is why the system was brought there. But fortunately or unfortunately, we are always good at copying. Therefore, we copied this. Method. Now, the advantages are there. Multiple stations can be set up with a similar history. There is no bias. This is one major thing. A set of instructions are there. Marks are allotted. And examiner will have to just observe 
give the marks if the student is doing the procedure correctly. So there is no subjective element in it. Asking questions, asking difficult questions, all these are ruled. It has to be compiled. A lot of permutation combinations are also possible. You can have a patient with atherosclerosis, aortic stenosis, left heart failure, or sometimes aortic incompetence, left heart failure. Progressively, you find that there is a CVC of the liver. Right heart failure also can be there. That can be an eventually there can be a portal hypertension also. So you find anything can happen. A lot of permutation combinations are possible. But it is difficult to construct the questions. Therefore, we will have to take our time. Tachud, I just thought I will do this presentation for you people this evening. Immediately I prepared it and I am presenting it. So there has to be some amount of commitment and a great deal of expertise in compiling these. The material is again limited. Sometimes it can be duplicated. So these are all the advantages. As I told you, multiple stations can be set up by duplication. There are some disadvantages also. One, it is repetitive. The moment the student knows that is there, they already they'll be having a thorough list of what is there in their center. Questions are not permitted. Therefore, they take it for granted. The teacher cannot distinguish between an excellent student, a mediocre student, and a just average student. So it is difficult to differentiate. The students have got access to the material. Even God cannot prove it. It is easy to conduct. But the scope is very limited. For example, if you are adding eight drops and then the Benedict's test is positive, what is the great thing that we can assess out of it? Or keep one drop, make a smear of peripheral blood. So these exercises are too very subjective, a lot of wavering marks, and you find that very precious marks are being lost for simple exercises. And finally, you find that there is no outcome to assess the practical skill. For example, a section cutting. Those days, the student will be having a section cutting and then, but now even for postgraduates, this has become part of it. Therefore, this will be the disadvantage. Whereas an actual one, you find it is quite versatile and there can be a plethora of questions thrown by expert examiners. Anyway, we shall remember the OSCE and the OSPI. Lectures, as I told you, you find that they can cover large portions. You find a few lectures can be there and in the right hands and experts, they will be able to cover anything. The experience is channelized. That is why senior faculty definitely are better suited for lectures. Lesser manpower is needed. Only now the concept of small group teaching, therefore more teachers. But those days there used to be fewer capable lecturers. Time management is possible. A single hall, combine two batches, give a good lecture. And it all depends on the versatility of the examiner or the lecture. The disadvantages are difficult for inexperienced teachers. There has to be a communicative skill which will be developed only over a period of time. Attention span of the student is very short, hardly about five to 10 minutes. Beyond that, you will have to modulate, you will have to question, you will have to walk here and there and turn the attention of the student again, bring them back. Back benches, difficult to control. Nowadays with the cell phone and other things, you people know. An eye to eye contact cannot be maintained throughout the hall and body language and voice modulation are mandatory, which are not very easy skills to develop. Boards, as I told you, there are some advantages, small groups, let's say about 40 to 50, it can be used. As I told you, develop an answer, you can control the entire class and it is being better accepted than the PowerPoint. The teacher must be well-versed in the subject not always facing the student and eye to eye contact is only partial because he is turning around and writing. Audibility, the same disadvantage. Diagrams, all of us may not be very skilled. That is why in some cases, diagrams are drawn out. Small group is, you find that there is a better student-teacher ratio. Better attention of the students. 
and it is changing from a teacher centered method to a student centered method wherein the teacher has to change this is a revolution in medical education and there is a better student teacher relationship the student the teacher also comes to know the problems of each other easier to explain they develop the confidence and it can be used in clinical cases bedside teaching practical dissection slides etc the disadvantage obviously a place where there are only two teachers now i need about 10 teachers multiple stations are required time management will be very difficult and when there are different teachers you find that the level of teaching by different people will be different therefore a uniform delivery will not be there and there has to be a focus on the time and the progress of the students this is what i had been this is again courtesy alami over here an ancient dissection hall a dissection table and those days maybe the important people will be around doing it and there will be a huge gallery from where the dissection can be watched and this is again an earlier picture there is also a dog here and the incision and the thing that is being done so these are definitely modality these people did not have the lcd or the net for learning so gross discussions slide discussions table discussions pg programs or also the videos can be taken and now coming to the types of questions you people have written a lot of tests you have written the university exam you must be very familiar that can be a long essay that can be a short essay short note structured questions long essay is one wherein there can be a lot of information and the way of presentation everything matters whereas in a short note since the time is limited you cannot differentiate between two students structured questions are you give the definite one because otherwise there can be a subjective element it is called so one student will be writing about the etiology i will be expecting the complications so the question itself is well structured define classify enumerate discuss add a note on the laboratory diagnosis so this is called a structured question problem based is a clinical scenario is given a lady is coming with convulsions is it going to be a case of a tetany or is it an epilepsy or is it a hysterical convulsion so you are supposed to look for other values that is a problem based question problem based learning on the contrary is the history is given the students go look for it try to shortlist it again come back further clues are given again they go this kind of le uh, learning is a continual learning it is not just some history 30 years old i am able to clinch the diagnosis match the following will be having irregular match because the moment i know two or three obviously i can guess the other whereas in jipma they used to give it as there will be five and then seven so it is called as unequal matching mcqs more used for competitive exam but nowadays it is part of the medical exam as well there are different levels of it a simple recall or sometimes it can be analytical you people would have written the neat exam you know the importance of it much better than coming to the assessment there can be a formative assessment progressively you see how a student is performing and then you go back to guide the student that is formative it is within the hands of the teacher and the department whereas a summative one it will go to the university the department doesn't have any control whatsoever finally the decision is whether the student passes or fails qualifying exam it is there whether you pass or fail in which a percentage matters you will let a score say 50% of the marks competitive exam again the devastating need you find that it is only the percentile even if i get 80% it doesn't matter there will be people who have got who have got more marks than me so obviously i will not be getting the desires so it is a competitive exam what are the methods of improving by a teacher one is a prior preparation see what i have done i have downloaded i have compiled i have put them in order again i have rearranged i have changed the font size the headings so many things 
So you observe what is to be done. Get a feedback from your colleagues or from the students. So if something is wrong, something is not very clear, we can change it the next time. Student performance. If my teaching is going to be good enough, it has to be reflected in the student performance. Review of it. And you yourself can have a video coverage and you can review it. Where you went wrong? Where was the body language? And you should use your own slides. Do not use borrowed slides. No downloading. No copy-paste method. The sequence has to be well arranged. And only one theme per slide and that has to be well explained. How can I improve the performance? Conditioning. First, I should go to the lecture hall or whatever place it is. Supposing you are going to give a guest lecture. Go to the place earlier. Condition yourself to the atmosphere there. Try to recall what are all the things you are going to narrate. You can divide the students into batches if they are going to be too very large. A quiz can be an interruption so as to gather their attention. That can be a pretest. What is the knowledge of the audience before you spoke? And after you spoke, what is it? That is a post test. And always three things are important. Time, title, target. You can take myocardial infarction for the physiotherapy students, for the BDS students, for the MBBS students, or for the MD students also, you find that the level changes. Time, title, target. And what will be required will be better organization. This is not within our control, it is outside. For example, I need more time for pathology. They should be able to allot it for me. The timing should be changed. I need compensatory classes, whatever it is. Time management again. Whatever is the change. If there are going to be lots of these holidays, they should be able to compensate. Space management. We talk about small group, but we do not have the space to put all the small groups separate. Timetable has to be properly structured. We call what is it called as a master timetable. For the entire pathology, we have got a master timetable. And Believe it or not, pathology department now in our college covers 1,200 students per year. Preparation. Obviously, I should be well prepared with my class. What is your teaching experience? This can be a question that can be asked when you finish. Be very confident. All my students have done that. Definitely, you people also would have done it. You have taken tutorials for small batches of students. For example, they will be taking thrombosis or neoplasia. You will be telling them the difference between benign and malignant or squamous cell carcinoma you will be explaining. You do the briefing before the practicals, whether it is a blood test or a urine examination, you are doing the briefing. Also, you are the owner of a small group for the MBBS, BDS or any other. The paramedical also, you have taken the classes. So this is your teaching experience on one side. On the other side, you have presented a lot of classes, seminars, journal clubs, and other things. That itself is an experience for you. You would have presented at the interdepartmental meetings or in the clinical society meetings. You would be bold enough to answer all this. And you would have done a paper presentation outside your institute. There might be definitely some publications. All of this will add credit to you. Only thing that is needed is your confidence in us. A class of yours can be something like this. You can have students like this. And this incidentally is the eye to eye contact. There is a teacher and you find that all the pairs of eyes are looking at the teacher. So this is per se an advantage, an eye to eye contact. So this is one group of students. And what kind of students you have got? It lies in your hands only. Look at this for a change. Not an iota of winking. Nothing has changed. Look at the attention that the speaker has gathered. So it is tremendous. So I wish you students again all the best. Pedagogy will be an exercise that will definitely fetch you more marks. So I hope this is of some use to you.
though it was a last minute rush by me i feel that i have delivered it at the right time thank you